This is it. Players coming off the sidelines. And the 2021 season ends for the Chicago Bears. The fan base is hungry. They're yep. hungry and they are as passionate as you experienced really in Kansas City from that, from that, from that fan base. But with no playoff win since 2010, uh, they're aching for excellence. There, there's no question about it. What is your message to the fan base? They should have hope. They should have hope because I've been where they where they are right now. I've been, you know, uh, sitting there and, and wishing there was more wins. I've, I've been through, um, you know, hard times. And I was able to witness and be a part of an organization that just kept climbing and getting better every single year until we ended up being a championship caliber team. Ken and Dagua, New York yep. to Chicago and a whole lot of stops in between. Uh, have you had time to reflect on your journey to this moment? There's been a couple of times where I've sat back in the office and just went through the whole journey and, you know, starting in New York playing high school football and then going to Boston College, having a good career. And then the best thing is, you know, the opportunity that I got was here in Chicago with the Bears. And it's just really cool to see how that went full circle to, to be back here as a general manager. What resonated with you, the process mm -hmm. with chairman of the board, George McCaskey and, and his crew? First impressions are important to me. And the fact that George went to the airport and picked me up at baggage claim, I thought that was special. And I truly value people and relationships. And when that happened, and for him to spend extra time with me in the car to get to know me on a deeper level, I knew everything I needed to know before I even walked in the building. You have a mission statement for this team? Yep. Because you're used to winning. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. won a lot in Kansas City. Yeah, really to get this thing kicked off is to take over the North and never give it back. Simple as that. Simple. Hard to do, simple as that. Exactly. That's a great goal. There's a lot of work to do. What's your philosophy on drafting? It's really to understand uh, how to tie evaluation with valuation. When and where to pick certain players on the board and have that feel is important to me. I believe in building the foundation with offensive linemen and defensive linemen, and obviously supporting our quarterback with giving him the most weapons that we can possibly. Spoken like a true offensive yeah, exactly. right there. Digging in the trenches. What kind of team you want to see? Yeah, I want to see a tough, violent, and fast team. In the draft room, we're going to label players with a bear logo that have toughness and passion for the game. I've found through history, if you have those two things, plus the skill set, you're gonna go far, you're gonna make the team, and also you're gonna affect the culture. With three different general managers in your background that you work for in Kansas City, is that value to you? Because everybody does it a little bit differently and you experience the roller coaster ride. Again, much success, yeah. a lot of AFC titles, Super Bowls and all that, but what'd you gather from that experience? Yeah. That experience and, and having time spent with three different general managers is one of the biggest reasons why I'm here today. I took a Stanford course for leadership and, and one of the topics was breaking authenticity. So the ability to, to take the good and, dis, and, and move on and learn from the bad of each individual has allowed me to grow faster and then allows me to put my own touch on building the roster here in Chicago. Run them, there you go, good. Run them, there you go, good. Run them back with power. Run! All right, tell me about Matt Eberflus, and is there a relationship from the past that we, we may not be aware of? Yeah, so the big thing is I had a criteria of what the head coach needed to look like and what characteristics he needed to have. And the moment that Matt walked into the room, he was able to check all of those boxes. He was passionate about the game. He was a leader. He could motivate the team. He valued players more than anything. He wants to put players in a position to succeed as much as possible. And then the biggest thing is just having a detailed plan. Matt had a detailed plan that had multiple layers to it. And that's what got me excited and I was convicted that he was the right person. Here one day and already building something immediately the next. Yeah. Can you put that in context for the average fan of what this has been like? Yeah, especially when your team's playing, yeah. uh, your old team is playing. <laughs> um, just to, to leave after that great uh, divisional game and coming to Chicago with one bag and one suit. And then next thing you know, you're living out of that bag and, and wearing that suit multiple times. So it's it's been fast, it's happened, happened fast, but I'm excited uh, to be here. You get Ian Cunningham, yep. very well thought of a gentleman from Philadelphia, uh, a guy like yourself, a former offensive lineman. Yep. Tell us about his role as assistant GM. Yeah, his role is really to be an extension of me. You know, general managers 
Uh, sometimes you turn into firefighters. There's other things that you gotta run and go do, and you need a stable force to keep the process moving forward. His background coming from uh, Baltimore, which had success with Ozzie Newsom, and then also for him to be a Super Bowl champion in Philadelphia, he's been able to learn from two different organizations and he can bring that to us, which is valuable. All right, Luke Getze. Yeah. First, tell me the impact of a man like Luke Getze and his yeah. experience and how that works for Justin. Yeah, the thing that stands out about Luke is he's a teacher. He's an educator of football. And for that type of mentality to come here and work with Justin, we should all be excited and to see the growth in Justin over time. He's gonna be detailed with his approach. He's gonna get back to fundamentals and do things the right way. And what is your vision for Justin? For him to be as successful as possible, for him to reach his ceiling. We don't know where his ceiling is yet. I know he's a talented player, but with what we're gonna support him with and put around him, uh, I expect high things from him. So you roll in here, walk into the building, and there's this imposing statue of George Hallis. Uh, what does that do to you as a football man? Uh, to me, it, there's, a, there's a standard and there's a bar that's been set um, that I'm gonna chase every single day. So to see that as you pull in, it, it gets me excited and it motivates me to do the right thing, to be disciplined and get this organization back on track.